हेलो फ्रेंड्स आवर टूडेज टॉपिक इज द माइटोसिस डिविजन वी हैव सीन द इंटरफेस इन द लास्ट लेक्चर सो नाउ वी हैव टू स्टडी द माइटोसिस बेसिकली द माइटोसिस हैव फोर सब स्टेजेस दैट इज प्रोफेज मेटाफेज एनाफेज एंड टीलोफेज सो वी विल सी वन बाय वन नाउ एक्चुअली द माइटोसिस मीन्स माइटो मीन्स थ्रेड एंड ओसिस मीन्स स्टेट सो इन दिस सेल डिविजन वी ऑब्जर्व और वी फाउंड the thread state that is why it is called as a mitosis now definition of mitosis is a type of cell division in which a cell divides into two daughter cells retaining retaining same chromosome number it means that if the parent cell have 46 chromosome then the two daughter cells also have the 46 chromosomes so that is why retaining the same number of chromosome this is first discovered in plants by strasburger in animal it is discovered by fleming and the term mitosis also is given by the scientist fleming it takes place in the somatic cells it means that it is generally takes place into the somatic cells means the body cells and there are another type of cells which are called as germinal cells which produces the gametes but during the time of gamete produ production mitotic division also takes place we will see into the reproduction human reproduction during the spermatogenesis and oogenesis there is a mitotic division takes place for the multiplication of the spermatids so it it will also takes place into during the gamete formation but commonly generally it is takes place into the somatic cells now it have two sub stages two phases that is karyokinesis and cytokinesis karyokinesis means karyokinesis means simply there is a nuclear division there is a division of nucleus which forms the two daughter nuclei so first step is the karyokinesis and then followed by cytokinesis means cytoplasmic division and then completely there is a formation of two daughter cells so prophase metaphase anaphase and telophase these are the sub stages into the karyokinesis karyon means nucleus and kinesis means division means that is a division of nucleus so prophase it include the two stages that is early prophase and late prophase because it is a longest phase so we divided for conven uh, for the convenient into the two stages that is early and late prophase so first we are going to study that is prophase that is the first phase that is what is called as prophase this is the longest phase of the karyokinesis okay this is the longest phase so you have to remember this point because there may be a question that is which is the longest phase so the answer is the prophase so basically i have two phases that is early prophase and late prophase so before the starting of prophase we have to study the interphase cell okay so interphase cell have the nuclear membrane that is nucleus is intact it is not dissociated then chromosomes is present into the network which is called as chromatin network or chromatin fiber for our convenient we are studying the animal cell we are studying the animal cell because the difference in plant cell and animal cell division is only into the cytokinesis so we will study at uh, during the cytokinesis what is the exact difference but animal cell we are considering the human cell specifically so human cell uh, diploid cell have the 46 chromosome but for our convenient we cannot draw the 46 chromosome because it is uh, we, it will become very complicated so for our convenient we are considering the diploid condition that is 2n is equal to 4c means the 2n means 4c means diploid condition have a four chromosome for this cell okay now there is a centriole this is a very important for the cell division so that's why i am showing the centriole okay so this is interphase cell this is nuclear membrane this is the bilayer structure outer and inner membrane this is the cell membrane now actual process of prophase or mitosis takes place or it is related with the nucleus because there is a division of nucleus so this is interphase cell now all the membranes all the cell cell organelles are intact these are not dissociated but when the cell enters into the mitotic phase 
and in mitotic phase there is a first phase that is the prophase and post the uh, into the prophase there is a early prophase so what happens actually into the early prophase the nuclear membrane is start to disappear that is why here i am showing double membrane and here i am showing only a dotted lines because the nuclear membrane is present but it is now start to disappear and these chromatin threads here is a present into the thread into the network fiber now this chromatin network or chromatin fiber start to condensation means they become a short they become a short that is the condensation and due to this condensation they will become short and uh, again also they will become a thick so thick and short and there is a migration of centriole because we have seen in interphase centriole duplicates into the g2 phase so now this duplicated centriole start to migrate to the opposite pole of the cell okay so this is the early prophase this is the picture diagram now we will see the theory or the points you have to remember what happen into the early prophase actually the nuclear membrane endoplasmic reticulum golgi bodies and other cell organelles start to dissociate start to dissociate so that is why nuclear membrane is look like this then centriole migrate to the opposite pole so this is centriole and this is one and another one is migrating to the, the opposite pole this is the pole so these two poles are opposite to the each other next chromatin fiber condenses i have told earlier that is chromatin fiber here is, these are present into the thread like structure now they gets condensed they become short and thick so chromatin fiber condenses into the early prophase so the appearance of chromatin fiber is is like this now from early prophase cell enters into the late prophase actually this is a one phase that is prophase we are dividing it into the early and late for our convenient so what happen in late phase now you know that the centriole start to migrate so now it is completely migrated and reached to the opposite pole into the late prophase and again it arises the spindle fibers it arises the spindle fiber centriole arises the spindle fiber and the spindle fiber gets attached to the chromosome at the centromere where the kinetochore is present okay you know that the centromere and kinetochore because we have seen the structure of chromosome into the cell chapter so this centromere uh, sorry spindle fibers get attached to the kinetochore centromere region on the centromere region there is a kinetochore is present so this spindle fiber gets attached with the kinetochore so this is happening totally into the late prophase so now we will see spindle fibers are formed okay spindle fibers are formed in this low, late prophase because in this early prophase there is a no spindle fibers here we have appearing the spindle fibers next point fibers get attached to the chromosome here i am showing the fibers get attached to the chromosomes and another important point but we will see our first the spindle fiber then the in animal and plant cell spindle fibers are of two types that is continuous and discontinuous now which are continuous this is the continuous fiber this is the continuous because it is not gets attached with the any chromosome that is why it is a continuous but this fiber is discontinuous from this point it started again here it is interrupted me it means that it is gets attached to the centromere and then from this spindle fiber arises and attached it uh, spindle fiber does not arise from in one direction these are arise from the both direction okay from the upper pole means from the upper centriole and from the lower centriole so this spindle fiber arises from these centriole and these the spindle fiber arised from the this centriole we will see actually the function of this spindle fiber into the next phase that is the meta phase so this is a picture of the late phase 
ठीक है दिस इज द पिक्चर ऑफ द लेट फेज वॉट एपन्स इन टू द लेट फेज स्पिंडल फाइबर्स गेट अराइज फ्रॉम द सेंट्रीओल एंड दिस स्पिंडल फाइबर्स गेट अटैच टू द सेंट्रोमियर्स सो दैट्स वाय सेंट्रोमियर आर नाउ रेडी फॉर द मूवमेंट इन द मेटाफेज देर विल बी अ मूवमेंट ऑफ दिस सेंट्रोमियर नाउ दिस क्रोमोजोम्स आर रैंडमली डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड बट इन मेटाफेज दे विल गेट अरेन्ज एट द इक्विटोरियल प्लेन एट द सेंटर ऑफ द सेल वी विल सी इन द मेटाफेज नाउ द टू इम्पॉर्टंट पॉइंट्स इन दिस प्रोफेज यू हैव टू रिमेम्बर दैट देर इज अ डिफरेंस इन बिट्वीन द एनिमल एंड प्लांट सेल इन एनिमल सेल द माइटोसिस इज अ एस्ट्रल माइटोसिस नाउ वॉट आर एस्ट्रल एक्चुअली दीज आर द फाइबर्स फ्रॉम विच दिस स्पिंडल फाइबर गेट्स अराइजेस सो इन एनिमल सेल इट इज अस्ट्रल माइटोसिस मीन्स देर इज अ फॉर्मेशन ऑफ दिस एस्ट्रल रेज वी आर कंसिडरिंग एयर द एनिमल सेल दैट्स वाय आई एम शोइंग द एस्ट्रल रेज बट इन प्लान सेल इट इज अ अन एस्ट्रल माइटोसिस मीन्स देर इज अ नो अराइजेस ऑफ एस्ट्रल रेज सो दिस इज द इम्पॉर्टंट डिफरन्स इन बिट्वीन द प्लांट एंड एनिमल सेल दैट यू हैव टू रिमेम्बर इन एनिमल सेल द माइटोसिस इज अ एस्ट्रल माइटोसिस and in plant cell it is a unastral mitosis means there is a no astral rays formation you have to remember so this is the late prophase so here we completed the first phase of the karyokinesis that is prophase prophase have two phases that is early and late prophase next phase in cell division in mitosis is metaphase we have seen the prophase so prophase is the is the first phase of uh, metaphase sorry the mitosis so in prophase there is a decondensation of the chromatin fiber so what happen there is a short and thick uh, chromosomes are appear into the metaphase and the nuclear membrane and all the organelles are disappear during the prophase so next one is metaphase now this is called as meta because the chromosomes are aligned or present at the equatorial plane of the cell that is why this phase is called as a metaphase so this is the second phase so what happens in metaphase the chromosomes which are uh, distributed randomly they are aligned in the one plane that is the equatorial plane this is the equatorial plane of the cell so here i am showing all the chromosomes are in a one plane we are considering diploid condition 2n is equal to 4c means four chromosomes so there are four chromosome and the dna content of the cell is gets doubled during the interphase because into the s phase there is a dna replication due to which the amount of dna gets doubled now the centrioles from centrioles these fiber that is spindle fibers arises and attach to the centromere so there are basically two types of the fiber one is the short and another one is long or continuous and discontinuous so this continuous is also called as interpolar fiber this is interpolar fiber it is a continuous it is not gets attached to the centromere or kinetochore that is the chromosomes so that is why it is called as a continuous which is also called as interpolar because it directly connects to the two poles that is why it is called as interpolar fiber another type of fiber that is the short fiber or discontinuous fiber is also called as chromosomal spindle fiber why it is called as chromosomal spindle fiber because this discontinuous fiber or short fibers are attached to the chromosomes that's why these are called as a chromosomal spindle fiber so these are the chromosomal spindle fiber these fibers are arises from the both poles upper pole and lower pole so chromosomes align in the equatorial plane during the metaphase and we can clearly seen chromosome only during the metaphase okay during the metaphase next one chromosomal spindle fibers are attached to the kinetochore we have seen the structure of chromosome into the cell chapter what is a kinetochore kinetochore is a thick proteinous part which is present at the centromere 
this is the centromere and this blue region is the kinetochore so these spindle fibers are attached to the kinetochore and these are the arms of the chromosome which uh, which are called as a chromatids so due to duplication of the dna it have this parent dna or old dna in the black and this blue represents the new dna or replicated dna that's why uh, in the metaphase i am showing the two arms means total four arm 1 2 3 and 4 but during the interface cell there are only two arms one and two one on one side and second is on the another side but here i am showing the four arms because of the duplication of the dna okay so here are this is copied dna or duplicated dna means amount of dna gets double in the inter phase so that's why these chromatids are appears new chromatids are appear into the chromosomes so this is the metaphase simply main point in metaphase is the chromosomes are aligned in the equatorial plane now next phase that is the anaphase this anaphase is the shortest phase of mitosis now the important point or important event into the anaphase is the centromere splitting in anaphase there is a splitting of the centromere now suppose this is a chromosome this is a centromere and this centromere have these arms parent and this is daughter arm this is parent arm and this is daughter arm because dna is duplicated so this is parent dna this is parent dna and on this parent dna there is a replication of the dna so this is new dna so now what happen basically in this phase there is a splitting of the centromere means this centromere splits due to the splitting due to the splitting these arms get separated so it will look like this upper arm and the lower arm sorry this is the lower so this is a picture after the splitting of the centromere so this contains the new dna and this upper chromosomes or chromatids contains the old dna so now this is old and this is new so now these chromatids after the separation now will act as separately a chromosomes now it is called as a chromosomes so this is the main event into the anaphase that is splitting of centromere you have to remember this point that is splitting of centromere occurs into the anaphase now this splitting is generally due to the two forces now which are the forces the forces are the first one is the contraction of chromosomal fibers now we will see the fibers now another one fiber is the interchromosomal fiber which is seen into the anaphase now why it is called as interchromosomal because this fiber is present in between the two chromosomes that is why this is called as interchromosomal fiber this is the chromosomal fiber we have seen into the metaphase that is the interpolar fiber or this is called as chromosomal spindle fiber so this is the chromosomal fibers and another these are interpolars and this one new fiber that is the interchromosomal fiber why interchromosomal because it is present in between the chromosomes so basically two forces which are responsible for splitting or the uh, transfer of the chromosomes at the two opposite poles now contraction of chromosomal fiber starts contraction of chromosomal fiber start now this is the chromosomal fiber this is the chromosomal fiber this one this one this one and this one this one these are the chromosomal fiber so as the chromosomal fiber contracts it pulls the chromosomes at the respective poles means this upper chromosomal fibers pulls this chromosome in the upward direction okay and the lower chromosomal fibers will pull this chromosome towards the lower pole 
सो दिस इज अ डायरेक्शन ऑफ मूविंग ऑफ द क्रोमोजोम्स एंड सेकेंड वन इज द स्ट्रेचिंग ऑफ इंटर क्रोमोजोमल फाइबर ड्यू टू द स्ट्रेचिंग ड्यू टू द स्ट्रेचिंग दिस पुशेज द क्रोमोजोम्स टूवर्ड्स दे आर रिस्पेक्टिव पोल्स टूवर्ड्स द अपोजिट पोल ड्यू टू द स्ट्रेचिंग ड्यू टू द स्ट्रेचिंग सपोज दिस इज अ क्रोमोजोम एट दि एट दिस पॉइंट देर इज अ क्रोमोजोम एंड एट दिस पॉइंट देर इज अ क्रोमोजोम एंड इन बिट्वीन दिस टू देर इज अ इंटर क्रोमोजोमल फाइबर एज दिस इंटर क्रोमोजोमल फाइबर स्ट्रेचेस इट पुशेज दि क्रोमोजोम्स टूवर्ड्स दि अपोजिट पोल्स एंड ऑल्सो अनादर फोर्स इज दि कॉन्ट्रेक्शन ऑफ क्रोमोजोमल फाइबर आर पुलिंग द क्रोमोजोम्स इन द अपोजिट पोल्स और टूवर्ड्स दि अपोजिट पोल so these forces are responsible for the movement of chromosome during the anaphase and finally these chromosomes which are splitted or which are formed by splitting up the centromere reaches to the respective poles so this is the end of anaphase so important point is the splitting of centromere and the movement of the chromosomes due to the contraction of chromosomal fiber and stretching of the interchromosomal fiber so these are the two forces which are responsible for the movement of chromosomes into the anaphase now the last phase into the karyokinesis is the telophase now what happens into the telophase now the chromosomes are finally reach to the opposite poles so here are four chromosomes 1 2 3 4 how uh, it will become four we have taken 2n is equal to 4c and now the cells are formed two cells from a single cell these are the two cells but due to the du duplication of dna and the splitting of the centromere this separated chromatids will now acts as a separate chromosome so that's why 1 2 3 4 chromosomes at the lower pole 1 2 3 4 chromosomes at the upper pole so that's why into the mitosis there is a no reduction in the number of chromosome as the parent cell have four chromosome the daughter two daughter cell also have four chromosomes four chromosome and four chromosome due to the duplication of the dna in mitosis there is a no reduction of chromosome number and that's why the two daughter cells are exactly similar these are the exactly copies of their parent cell because here there is a no mixing of the genetic material no exchange of genetic material between the any chromosomes that's why these are exactly similar these are exactly copies of their parent so in telophase what happen the finally the chromosomes are reached to their respective pole these are the two poles and the constriction in cell membrane starts into the telophase now this cell membrane this is the cell membrane start to constrict and that's why due to this con constriction there is a formation of two separate poles and at the each pole at the each pole daughter chromosome start to decondense again in the prophase there is a condensation of the chromosome and due to the condensation of that chromatin network this chromatin network becomes a short and thick but again in telophase there is a decondensation and due to the decondensation again this chromosomes uh, chromosomes will become thin and thread like structure which is called as the chromatid chromatin network next nuclear membrane begins to reappear so that's why here i am showing in dotted line the nuclear membrane again the nuclear membrane reappear which is this appear into the prophase so all the events in telophase are actually exactly opposite to the prophase phase in the prophase there is a condensation one but in the telophase there is a decondensation nuclear membrane begins to reappear in in telophase but in prophase nuclear membrane start to dissociate so exactly opposite events then 
spindle fibers are also disappear but the spindle fibers start to appear into the prophase so here i am not showing the spindle fiber because these are disappear the spindle fiber that is the chromosomal i interchromosomal fibers are disappeared and finally the daughter nuclei are formed at the two respective poles and after this telophase there is a cytokinesis means the division of cytoplasm finally which leads into formation of two daughter cells next topic is the cytokinesis this is the last topic of mitosis mitosis completed into the two stages that is karyokinesis and the cytokinesis so we have seen the karyokinesis all the stages of the karyokinesis which includes the prophase metaphase anaphase and telophase and finally into the telophase there is a uh, formation of two nuclei at the two different poles now the next step that is the cytokinesis now cytokinesis cytos means the cytoplasm kinesis means division so simply in the cytokinesis there is division of cytoplasm of the mother cell so the difference in plant and animal cell is observed or found into the cytokinesis the method of cytokinesis is different in plant and animal so first we will we will see the cytokinesis in the animal cell so in animal cell cytokinesis by for by following of plasma membrane it means that cytokinesis takes place by following of the plasma membrane that deepens and the daughter cells are formed by the cleavage means there is a formation of the furrow and that furrow deepens and due to the uh, deepening there is a cleavage like this so this is the furrow this is a furrow and at a one stage this furrow will uh, furrow again goes deep and deeper and finally finally leads into leads into the cleavage of the mother cell and finally leads into formation of two different cell cell 1 and cell 2 so this is the method of cytokinesis into the animal cell means by furrowing of the plasma membrane this is the plasma membrane and this plasma membrane furrows in the from periphery towards the center and finally it's break and forms a two daughter cells and here the mitosis completed now in plant cell cytokinesis in plant cell cytokinesis uh, in plant cell takes place by formation and extension of cell plate okay takes place by formation and extension of the cell plate means here is a no furrowing here is a formation of the cell plate from where from center to periphery so here i am showing the cell plate so this is a cell plate which start from center and extend towards the periphery and finally leads into the formation of two cells this upper cell and lower cell this gets separated and this cell plate is mainly made up of the calcium pectate okay so which has the calcium molecules so this is the cytokinesis in the plant cell so here we now completed the complete mitosis division both the stages that is karyokinesis and cytokinesis in the next lecture we will start the meiosis division this is a second type of division thank you